What is going on guys? Grave here. Welcome back to another episode of this week's gaming news. We'll have some Red Dead online gameplay in the background, so I hope you guys enjoy that. Of course, one of the biggest stories of the week was Microsoft purchasing uh, ZeniMax Studios, which includes Bethesda. That is one of the nine companies that's kind of inside of that, uh, you know, uh, different development teams that ZeniMax Studios owns or ZeniMax owns in general. Um, and this was a big, big win for Xbox, in my opinion, because they're going to have they're going to have a lot of options for different games to bring to the Game Pass that were not already included in the Game Pass. Also, Bethesda is included in that, and a lot of people were really excited to hear this because people are hoping now you might see things like Fallout uh, Vegas 2. Uh, something if, if Microsoft is backing Bethesda, they're hoping they're going to see some of these fan favorite games get you know other titles because of you know the money that Microsoft will be able to pump into all of these different development teams. Also, uh, the, the price tag for this for Microsoft was $7.5 million. So you better believe Microsoft definitely thinks they're going to make a lot of money from having all of these different development teams, uh, including Bethesda there, uh, kind of working with them. Bethesda did come out and say they're the same company. Nothing's going to change. Uh, they did not really talk about Starfield or talk about uh, the new Elder Scrolls game that they kind of teased years ago at E3. Um, Microsoft did come out and say these games will be available on Game Pass. So that's going to be kind of interesting to see if some of these AAA titles that Bethesda makes will be on Game Pass day one. That would be a pretty big thing as well, in my opinion. Also this week, um, Sony, or really Amazon, has warned that some of the Sony PS5 pre-orders that people had you know, done online may not show up day one. You know, a lot of these companies, if you order online, say, you know, you have a street date, release day. Uh, now Amazon is warning some people that have pre-ordered uh, PS5 consoles or Amazon may not get their console on day one. They have not said if they're going to go out and send out emails letting people know that have pre-ordered, you know, if you're going to get it or if you're not going to get it. I think it left a lot of people kind of upset that ordered on Amazon because it was kind of just a mess ordering a PS5. And I think a lot of people were unhappy to hear, you know, I ordered this online and it's not going to actually be here when I wanted, you know, wanted it to be. That's kind of how it's going to go. I've heard a lot of other companies having the same kind of issues, having to cancel pre-orders or whatever the case may be. But when it gets closer to time to release, I'm going to be interested to see if Amazon actually puts out some kind of email saying, you know, you ordered in time, you're going to be able to get this on release date. Uh, if Or you're going to get an email that says, you know, you did not order in time. We're going to have to wait till we restock and you're going to get it the next week or whatever the case is. Another thing that Sony said this week was they really apologized for the way the PS5 pre-orders were handled. Of course, as you guys all know, PS5s were sold out everywhere, no matter if it was day one or when they went live early, the next day when they restocked a little bit or the next time they restocked a little bit. When these companies were restocking the PS5s, any of these stores, they were pretty much sold out instantly, sold out within seconds. And Sony says they will make more pre-orders available and also they will have more consoles by the holidays. They did not say if these are going to be like a second wave kind of pre-order thing where you know, you're going to have to wait a couple days, a week to get these consoles. They've not really mentioned that yet, but they did say they will have plenty, or they will have plenty of consoles out at some stores like Walmart, Targets, Best Buy, all those kind of things uh, available on day one if you want to actually go to the store and physically pick up a copy or purchase a copy. I, I find it kind of funny that a lot of these companies say they don't want to do in-game uh, pre-orders. Like Walmart was considering doing in-game pre-orders, and then they came out and said, or in-store pre-orders, excuse me, and then they came out and said, we're not going to do in-store pre-orders, we're going to do online pre-orders only. But they also said that they will have PS5s available on release day. In my opinion, I know they're, they said they're doing it for the whole COVID situation. They didn't want to have tons of people in the store uh, trying to pre-order the console. But at the same time, if you're going to have consoles on release day, you're going to have tons of people there anyway. I'm not sure which way would have been the best to handle it. But just know a lot of these stores will, ha will have consoles on, on release day. But I still think it's going to be a mess, if you ask me, uh, if you're trying to go to a, a local, you know, Walmart, Target, Best Buy, whatever the case is, where, wherever you live, you know, maybe your games, local GameStop. I think there's going to be tons of people out trying to find them because it really has been a mess online trying to pre-order them. Uh, of course, you can find tons of them on eBay now where people are posting them for unreal, ridiculous prices. I would never recommend buying anything from there. You'll be able to find one. It may not be day one. It may be the next week or the next week. But I think most everyone's going to be able to find their console, hopefully, uh, that they want over the holiday season. Another thing that, of course, happened this week was Xbox pre-orders went live. And even though Microsoft was promising a smooth kind of pre-order system, that didn't really happen. A lot of the, uh, the sites were just bombarded with people, just flooded with people trying to purchase an Xbox console. 
and a lot of these websites were shut down you couldn't get on to them kind of the same issue you had with ps5 you might get one in your cart you go to check out and this is out of stock uh, also uh, there was a, a big surge in xbox one x pre-orders uh, or purchases and i think a lot of people were confused that you know the two new consoles are the series s and the series x and i think a lot of people got on their purchasing consoles got in a hurry and then just purchased xbox one x's so they're ending, up, they're ending up kind of being stuck with an old gen console instead of one of the new gen consoles. I'm not sure why Microsoft decided to name their consoles the similar thing. Um, it's kind of, I, I was kind of wondering if this was going to happen, especially if you're a parent trying to buy your kid a, a console, you're trying to hurry up, you're at work, or whatever the case may be. Somebody might have just purchased the wrong thing, but they said Xbox One X sales skyrocketed uh, during the you know pre-order time of the Series S and the Series X. I'm not sure if Microsoft's going to do anything about this. You may just be stuck with an old gen console. They really haven't made a comment on that just yet. Um, the other thing that I thought was kind of interesting that uh, was talked about by a lot of different writers this week was after Microsoft bought, you know, the ZeniMax family, you know, Bethesda, all these other companies in there, uh, ZeniMax Online Studios is also included in that, the company that makes Elder Scrolls Online. Um, they say that Microsoft, the new Xbox, it's kind of returning to that RPG console. And back in the day, the 360, in my mind, there was a lot of good RPG games uh, on the 360. And over the years, PlayStation has really made a lot of exclusives that are kind of RPG style games. But now with this whole purchase of uh, Bethesda, Zenimax Online Studio, some of these other development teams, they're definitely talking about the Xbox becoming the RPG console, which is a great thing. I love RPG games. Hopefully all of these games will be coming to both consoles, you know, or all three platforms, really, PS5, Xbox, and, of course, PC. Because I know a lot of these games are fan favorites, no matter what platform you play on. As you all know, I'm never really a fan. I have never been a fan of exclusive content on anything. I think everyone, you know, that wants to play games should be able to purchase these games at the same time and play them at the same time. I know that's not the case, but hopefully one day um, that will be the case. I guess I can always wish. I don't think it's ever going to happen, but... I'm going to be kind of interested to see what RPG games come to Xbox. This may swing a lot of people's, you know, kind of opinions of what they want to purchase. Also, some people may have decided, you know, I was not going to buy an Xbox, but I may have to, do, you know, buy one later on down the road when some of these games come out. We'll kind of have to wait and see. Um, another thing this week that came out uh, for PS4 is Rocket League. Rocket League is now free to play. I guess it's not really just technically on PS4. You also can get it on the Epic Game Store. But of course, I play on PS4 Rocket League, you know, when it first came out, it was free. And then, of course, it went, you know, to be purchased. And now season one of Rocket League has started. There's a big following of Rocket League. They even have professional teams that play Rocket League. It is now free as of September the 22nd. And if you play on PlayStation, there is no PS Plus required. Like I said, also, if you're on PC, you can get it on the Epic Game Store. So that was a pretty big thing that Rocket League came out for free for everyone. If you've never played it, it's pretty enjoyable. So you might want to give it a try. Another thing that was talked about this week, of course, is the big dispute with Apple and, you know, a lot of these phone companies, a lot of these companies not wanting Fortnite uh, on their, really, uh, stores anymore. And, you know, Apple is probably the leading uh, one that everyone's been talking about. And the rumor is right now, if you upgrade your iOS to 14, that might get rid of Fortnite completely. And Epic has warned uh, people of that. And so if you're a person that likes to play mobile Fortnite and you own a iPhone, you have, you're going to upgrade to iOS 14. You might want to be careful considering that uh, Epic is warning it might delete the game completely. And then, of course, you won't be able to download it because it is not in this Apple store anymore. Uh, last but not least, if you are purchasing your console, uh, your new gen console from GameStop, GameStop says they will have payment plans, three different payment plans for all the new generation consoles. So the digital PS5, the disc version of the PS5, the Xbox Series S and the Xbox Series X. They said they're going to have multiple plans, uh, whether it be, you know, you pay it off just a little of a time, kind of like a layaway thing, then you can get it. Uh, if you want to pay it by the month, if you want to pay like installments, they're going to have all different types, type of plans. They said, you know, if you're going to buy yours at GameStop in store, definitely ask some of the people that work there if you can get a payment plan, you know, if you don't have all the money right then and there, which kind of shows you a, a kind of how the times we're in right now. A lot of people kind of worried about jobs, you know, uh, COVID, all that kind of stuff, being at work, things shutting down. So luckily these companies, you know, like Sony uh, has not announced anything particularly from them yet, but Xbox and Microsoft did announce they're going to have a payment plan, but also the payment plan from GameStop is going to be good. I'm expecting to see other companies follow suit like Walmart, Target, Best Buy, whatever the case may be, uh, the people that are selling these. 
consoles. I'm expecting to see them have payment plans as well. Now, I don't think this payment plan is directly through GameStop. I think they're using a third-party company, so you might want to be aware of that and check everything out before you, uh, you know, you set up a payment plan just to make sure that you're not going to be paying way too much for it uh, in the end. But anyway, guys, I just want to let you know about that as well. Let me know what you think about this week's gaming news. Let me know, of course, what you think about Microsoft purchasing Bethesda. And if you like the video, hit the like. If you have not subscribed yet, please do so. If you are a subscriber, make sure you click the bell icon in the top right corner so you know when all my videos go live. And be sure to check out everything down in the description, GT Racing, the community Discord, and of course my Twitter. I'll catch you all next time. Peace.